Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. And welcome to yet another episode of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm your host, Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And we're joined by a friend and executive chef for both Pond House and the Pond House Grill in Glastonbury, one of the great chefs of the area, Mr. Jordan Stein. Hi, Thank gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me out. And uh, you're in for a treat yourself, besides sharing your vast knowledge of food and wine pairings. You'll be tasting some wine with us tonight, and we're looking forward for you to taste them and give us your honest opinion. And honesty is our policy here yes. on the show. So uh, please feel free to be honest about the tasting. You will be offending no one. And as always, I want to give a shout out to one of our viewers out in California, San Diego, Sandy and John Grant. Thanks for watching. So, Jim, I'm sure you have some questions for Jordan, since I see him a little bit more than you. Why don't you lead into something right off the bat? Well, the, the whole reason we had you on tonight, Jordan, is because we wanted to talk about BYO. And you run two very successful restaurants uh, with a BYO policy. Mm, we do, and certainly. Do you want to uh, just tell our audience uh, what prompted you to start off with BYO? Well, we did BYO. We were working on our liquor license in Elizabeth Park for quite some time. And it was our way to kind of attract a, a different clientele who wanted to have a bottle of wine with dinner. So we welcome them to come into the dining room and order food and open a bottle of wine. Um, after eventually, in years and years, we got our liquor license, we decided that we were going to keep that going. A, because we built the whole dining room on BYOP, and B, it was like a thank you to our patrons for the support through the years, and we just didn't want to take that away from them. Um, and even the case, it, the cork fee at both the Pond House and the Pond House Grill is only $5. Wow, that's, that's so, very inexpensive. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, by doing this, you've gathered a lot of loyal customers over the years. Who we certainly have. Have enjoyed, me being one of them, have enjoyed bringing wine both that we enjoy and tasting your spectacular food. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're quite welcome. And for this evening, actually, um, we're going to be tasting three, two sparklings and a white, which I think, well, I'm hoping, will pair well with some of the Easter-type foods that might be coming up. Um, we usually have a red gym. But we're not doing a red tonight, tonight, so I think the two sparklings and the Italian white, I think, uh, will go pretty well. And uh, I have a question for the Pond House Grill. Uh, how have you guys been doing since you opened up the BYOB restaurant up there? Well, we've been doing very well. It seems to be progressing very nicely. Um, we're getting some wonderful feedback, and believe it or not, we're seeing a lot of faces from West Hartford take a trip on the other side of the river to say hello and show their support. And we're very grateful for that. And we appreciate everybody coming out and, and eating some food and, and cracking a bottle with us and spending some time over on the other side of the river. And the menus are distinctly different or do they share some of the same characteristics? We do have some of the same things. Uh, some of our signature things that you'll find in the park, i.e. crab cake, Indian rice, uh, nachos in the park. Uh, those things are um, both home in both spots. Uh, but the dining room bowl in, in, in West Hartford and in Glastonbury, you'll find a lot of, of different things. But you will find eclectic madness in both of them. Uh, we pull ingredients from all over the world. Uh, we try to be seasonal and we try to be local. But as somebody who's a professional culinarian in the northeast part of the United States, you can't always do that. 
Now, Jordan, your menu changes fairly frequently. It certainly uh, does. What, what influ influences you to get those new items on the menu? It's the same influence that made you wear this shirt today. <laughs> when, we go, when I go to sit down and write a menu, um, it's really how you feel. It's an attitude. Uh, when you write a menu, it reflects the attitude that um, you have that day when you're writing it. It can be dark. It can be colorful. It can be eclectic. Um, it's really just a statement of your personality and your kitchen's personality. Um, we're a little bit outside of the box, <laughs> uh, not only via employee style, but also food style. And, and we like, we set our own bar um, and we don't really go with trends. We kind of do what we want to do and hope that people like it. And for the most part, we've been pretty successful uh, with that attitude in writing menus. So we'll continue to do it like that. So. Now, do you try and incorporate uh, local foods or foods from local farmers? Certainly. Uh, in fact, um, this week we'll be running lamb all up through Easter. Uh, that's Connecticut raised lamb from Seppi Farm out in Sandy Hook. Uh, we're supporters of Urban Oaks in New Britain. Uh, we do a lot of local stuff when we can. Um, we also, of course, if you've been to the, to the pond house in the park, uh, we grow a lot of vegetables there in the summer. We compost in the kitchen, um, and it goes back to the earth and then comes back. So, and usually in the summer, we have a very cool salad. It's called Just Picked, where you order the salad, but we don't cut the lettuce until you order it. Wow. So that's pretty good. It and it's been doesn't a, get any fresher than that, Yeah, it's it? been a fan favorite for a while. So we're hoping to, again, repeat that, uh, and hopefully we'll get that going in Glastonbury, too, this year. And when you sit down to design the menu, um, are you thinking of wines that you want to pair with these foods? Absolutely not. That was just the question I was going to go into. <laughs> Absolutely not. We, um, we, we cook food the way that we want to eat it. Um, and I'm not a big fan of red wine with steak or white wine with fish. I think you eat what you want to eat and you drink what you want to drink. That uh, sounds like our principle here. You <laughs> drink what you like and you buy what you like. Yeah. There really are no set rules. That's a very good well, point. It, it, it makes it a lot easier because you, you rack your brain. It's hard enough to work in a food service operation that's successful. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things that people who aren't in our line of work they're not exposed to. So they don't understand um, the intricacy of chefing a professional high volume restaurant. Uh, but right now, um, we try to uh, take a little bit from all over the world. So for instance, in the Pond House Cafe in the park, all of the wines that are inside um, the cafe dining room are by the glass are Connecticut wine. So we also have some wines that are from Connecticut and on the banquet side, they go a little bit further. Now in Glastonbury, we took it to a new level. We try to stay boutique-y, but we definitely represent a lot of continents there. You do, I've seen the, the wine list and actually, it, it's actually pretty uh, extensive. I it think, is, I think offer. so as well. And uh, actually very reasonable at a lot of the bottle prices. Well, I think we're, too. we're trying to be. Now for the uh, customer that comes into your restaurant and is unsure what to drink with a particular dish, would you make a, a recommendation for them? We can. I mean, there's also, you know, we go through with the servers and we say, well, you know, this three or four would go with this dish and, you know, these over here would go with this dish. And we try to give a couple of different options with what people are eating. Um, and a lot of times what we'll see, and I'll have people call me and say, I'm bringing in this particular bottle of wine if it's real special, and we'll craft a meal around that bottle. And it still only costs five bucks to pop it, so it's a, a heck of a bargain. So yeah, if, you, if you're going to order a, 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 bring a $100 bottle of wine, it's five bucks. If you're going to bring a $10 bottle of wine, it's five bucks. That's so it. And Jordan, you are I still can't. the only person who has made me a delicious beef wellington. <laughs> <laughs> and I will suggest if you're thinking of a beef wellington, because you have that on your mind, this is the gentleman to call. My you can't always do it. <laughs> my suggestion is to give me a couple of days notice, though, for sure. I hope you're not so. flooded with responses. Mm -hmm. or no, it's all right. We'll take them. I also want to point out that in the greater Hartford area, you have a few other great BYOB restaurants that we've all tried that I just want to plug only because, you know, we live in the community, we want to have them do well. There's Bon Appetito in Canton, which is really good. There's Elephant Trail in Avon. Um, these are all BYOB. Um, what was the other place? The Green Papaya? The Green Papaya, which is another phenomenal place. All wonderful food. You can bring your own wine, enjoy the service, enjoy the food, and uh, support our local restaurants in the area. So. I think I'm ready for a first drink tonight. Absolutely. And I think we're going to go with the Robert Mondavi Brut. I don't think any of us have tried this yet. It is a value sparkle <coughs> under $10, and it happens to be Lady Gaga's favorite. From what I understand, she doesn't do any concerts unless she has at least two or three cases in her room. She's now, a thirsty girl. She's a thirsty girl. <laughs> so 
I don't want to say it's cheap, but it's inexpensive, and it might be just the right type of sparkling if you're having a big party and flavor complexity might not be the issue. And we're going to put that to the test right now. We are all virgins in this, so to us, gentlemen. Thanks for having me, Gus. It smells like Lady Gaga. It does. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad, not a bad aroma. It's light, it's crisp. Yeah. It's a little warmer than it should be because it's been sitting out for a little while, but I think a little bit crisper, it might be a little bit more uh, flavorful. You, no. it can't, you can't hide anything when it warms up a little bit. So Actually, that's true. So what do yeah. you think? I think it's pretty good. For the price point? Yeah. So we're going to give this one a thumbs up to start off? With? I would thumbs, thumbs up, up it Absolutely. for sure. Thumbs up for Robert Mandavi Brut. Good job, Robert. And uh, I think this would pair well with a large party where you're not worried about... Um, people's taste buds per se because they'll be drinking and eating and this is the kind of thing that people will drink might not remember but also not hate at the same time yeah there's really no distinct aftertaste with this uh, it just kind of fades away so it's, uh, you know, it's it would make it would make a, a wonderful champagne cocktail half and what would you do with this so i would put some guava puree in there and Ooh, i yeah. would love that that would be wonderful it would make it a little bit creamier um, it would give it that nice exotic aroma and taste um, and it, it's very, very clean, and that would be delicious. Now, if someone were going to try and make a guava puree at home, how would they do that? Wow. Or is this a trade know. secret? I, 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 you I never even thought it. about it. You know, i got to believe that any of your higher-end grocery stores, if they don't carry guava puree, um, that if you ask them, they would order it for you. However, we're lucky enough to have a large Latin community here in the Hartford area, and I know for sure that any of your Seatown town towns would definitely have guava puree and if they didn't they would also get it for you so it's a very right. popular fruit um, amongst the latin community so what would be the mix for a glass this size roughly how about a tablespoon into a glass you heard it here first guava champagne cocktails sounds good right delicious all right i can't wait to should, try one should have brought some <laughs> well our first taste this evening has gone over very well so there's nobody spilling their glass out on the floor so it's that's early very good uh, Jordan, you actually brought the, the second sparkling that we're going to try tonight. I did. Yes, that's very important. That? Yes, please. Uh, and, well, there's a reason for it. This is uh, a Moscato um, that, believe it or not, it smells like roses. And I don't know if everybody knows out there, but, you know, the Pond House obviously is in Elizabeth Park and, and is home to the Rose Garden. Um, but the swirl on the Pond House logo is not really a swirl. It's actually looking down on a rose. Um, and so we brought this in because we thought it was really wonderful that we could have uh, something that you put in a glass that smelled like roses. It definitely has the rose color and Moscatos are very, very hot right now. Um, and it's also a wonderful value. Uh, you'll be able to find it retail on the south end of $20 and in our spot just on the north end of twenty dollars and i think it's available locally i think both at harvest wines and farmington avenue west hartford and vintology or vin uh, the, the vinotech yes that's in farmington on uh, main street yeah. and did you have a how did you come to picking out this one do you have a taster that found they, this for they, you they or? brought it to us they brought it to you yes well now i'm going to bring it to myself nice <laughs> These guys open the wine really good, don't they? It's a nice crisp pop. Lots of practice. You know, there's a, we talked about this in our, our champagne and sparkling show. There are some theories that you're really not supposed to pop the champagne. It should open up very quietly. But Well, there's some people that take the sword and just hack the top of it off. Yes, those Napoleon generals, they uh, really started something with that. The louder, the better, man. Actually, it's not the louder, the better. It's the softer, the better. But here... We're not serving it. That's it's true. It's okay. We do want the effect for yeah. we're drinking something sparkling and festive. So now, we, it, obviously, a little it's it's light, but if you look, the bubbles are going straight up, which is definitely a good sign. Uh, and they're a nice small bubble. But yeah. take a smell, and it's got a wonderful nose. You know, it's, it's once again about the bubbles. These bubbles are much finer than. The I was going to make the same it. comment. There's a lot more bubbles here, and and they are much finer than. And if we, as we discussed before, I, in my opinion, the finer the bubbles, the finer the effervescence is on your mouth. I love the effervescence. Uh, I love yeah. effervescence. <laughs> so you think Lady Gaga would like the smell of this? Well, let's see. Yeah, I smell a little apple. 
There's definitely a lot of apple and there's some good citrus and notes in here as well. But you'll notice that the end overture is roses. And it's yes. very slight and it's very subtle. But if you taste it, it's, it's at the end. Um, and it's definitely an overture, very interesting. Uh, we fell in love with it right away. It's quite unique. I, I don't think I've ever tasted rose. Me neither. In a while I was. Before. I said we'll take a case. That's it. And Jim, this is technically a rosé. This would not be considered yeah. a rosé champagne, would it? Even I, though, because of the color, that's what I'd call it. Right. But it, it, from what our experience has been with a rosé champagne, I don't think you compare this. It's a completely different taste. I've, I've, again, I've never tasted anything like this before in a champagne. The, again, the, the the Moscatos are really really hot this year. It's really good. And so that's what's going on. So everybody go out and grab a bottle. It's delicious. You, know, you can't go wrong. And something on your menu, like say at the Pond House Grill right now, um, what would be great to I mean, you can have Besides this, everything. You can have this with a burger. This will stand up to the Indian rice. But for me, personally, I think this would be a great to go with our duck dish. So Which is one of the ones I haven't had at the Pond House yeah. Grill yet which is distinctly different than the one at the Pond House. Absolutely. Well, we try to stay uh, the same, but slightly different. But hey, you mentioned the Indian rice a moment ago. How much spice is in that? It's, it's not spicy at all. It's very subtle. Um, we, uh, a, we have a really um, amazing curry blend that we blend uh, in-house in both houses, um, and it's with uh, cashews and, and pistachios and dried fruit. Um, and peas and carrots and a wonderful basmati. Basmati is very aromatic in it its is. own right. Yep. Um, so, you know, you don't want to hide that. You want to be able to taste that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful dish. You know, I took it off about four years ago and I got yelled at by all the customers. <laughs> so I had to put it back on immediately. And that's pretty much how it went down. And are you still doing your own house-made hot sauce? We do. We do the house-made hot sauce. In fact, we're ready to put a bunch of chilies in the ground. Uh, again, so I know that some people come in and they like to get a steak and they want us to rub some really hot hot sauce on there before we I don't grill know who it. he's referring to. <laughs> 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 but uh, the thing that I like about uh, what Jordan does is uh, the, the blend between spice and hotness never overpowers the flavor of the steak, which uh, to me is extremely gratifying because I love the hot, but I also love the flavor of the meat. And the combination that I've had usually is always spot on. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our hot sauce and our chilies and uh, the fact that they're grown in Connecticut. Um, you can buy bottles of hot sauce in both venues. Um, and we're real excited to go into the new season to try some, some new chilies and put them into the ground and see how we come out. Do you yourself do any gardening on your own? You probably don't have time. with. Uh, well, we do a little bit of gardening. In fact, at my house uh, just yesterday, we did sunflower seeds and strawberry plants. So, but we had to take them inside because apparently it's cold. And apparently we're getting some snow tomorrow night. So, what do you know? That's all right. It won't stick and it was such an easy winter. So, we'll take one last roll with it. I would think that the, the mildness of the winter really helped you guys business-wise as compared to last year well, in regards to the uh, last year. Last year was, a, you know, as everyone knows, a, one of the worst in history. Yeah. But the restaurant business is very picky like that. People always go out to eat. Um, and we find that after the very first snow, whether it's two inches or 10 feet, nobody goes out to eat anyway because they forgot how to drive in the snow. But then after that, everybody will muscle up and go out. So. And you get that cabin fever. Cabin fever is key, man. Well, I'm getting a sparkling fever, so I'm going to oh, consume yeah. the rest of this. I agree with that, sparkling. Hey, you mentioned a spicy a sauce for the steak earlier. When I serve spicy foods, I like to pair that with a sweeter wine, typically a Riesling. Uh, do you have anything uh, that you suggest with, with uh, spicy steak? Or uh, I think a Riesling a is, is a good grape for that. I think um, a Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Grigio goes very well with heat. Uh, but I also think that there's a lot of pepper notes and some big reds. And I think that you can match those pepper notes and the big reds with the heat mm. uh, and the capsules of a chili. Um, and that works also. Again, it depends on your palate. Yours is different than yours is different than mine. So it goes back to drink what you want to drink and eat how you want to eat and everything will work out. The combination of what he's saying and what we uh, decided when we did this show is, is almost a great parallel because we did this show because we wanted the average person to try a lot more different wines than they were comfortable with, um, to explore their palate with different flavors of wines that they didn't, weren't familiar with, similar to food. So when you go to a restaurant or you go to a, a wine store, whether it's Jordan's Place or any restaurant, don't be afraid to try something different. 
just like in a store, if you see a wine that you're not familiar with, give it a shot, because you might love it. And we also didn't want uh, people to feel like they were locked into a specific type of wine if they were having steak, for example. Uh, and you know, typically the old rule of thumb was you'd have a big bold red cab and that, that'd be the only thing you could pair with the steak. And uh, I've been saying the same thing you're saying it's is just drink what true. you like. Yeah, drink, drink, drink what you, what like. you yeah. like. It's does it stand up better in food theory it does. But food theory is so messed up. In fact tonight, um, and just to let you guys know this is a tape show. Um, but tonight um, over in Glastonbury, we're pairing uh, a, a curry banana tin ball with some of that Connecticut lamb that we brought in. Mm. So believe it or not, lamb and banana pairs very, very well together. That's interesting. Now, how do you match up lamb and banana and curry with wine? It's pretty complicated. It's complicated. Eat what you want to eat yeah. and drink what you like to drink. Figure it out. Well, also remember, you get a couple glasses in, you're gonna, it's gonna match anyway. Right? You're right. Yeah, I would probably, uh, in that situation, if it was me and I was trying, I'd probably bring three different bottles. Not consume them all, but have three different Just glasses lined tasting. up yeah. with the meal and trying a sip of each wine. That's a very good meal. point, Bob, because also I wanna let everybody know that you can bring five bottles into a BYOB place and you can cork them back up and leave with them if you don't finish. That's true. So if you want, and which is something that a lot of people don't know. Um, and so if you want to bring four or five bottles and have four or five different small courses and you want to cork them back up and walk with them, you're more than welcome to do that. Still cost you five bucks a bottle yeah. over at my spot anyway, but um, you, please understand that there are rules and you know, you should know what your limits are and what your options are. Mm -hmm. So this Absolutely. way you can have a half of a glass. And well, yeah, some of my favorite meals uh, are with wine flights where I have three different wines to try with the meal. And, and that's actually part of the fun of enjoying the meal. Absolutely. Like you, you get the wine changes with the food, and sure. the food changes the wine, and, and it's great to have three different experiences instead of uh, one. I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. And I also know that, you know, whatever wine that you have in the first or second course, if you taste it again after the fourth or the fifth course and leave a little bit, it changes. It so, does. Absolutely. You know, the air, it, the air gets aerated, and it's just wonderful. It's a different nose, different palate feel. So keep that in mind, too. Maybe you don't want to cork it until the very end. You might want to Just give yourself a little yeah. more, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm very interested about the next one we're going to be tasting. It's a Fontana di Papa Bianco, and it's an Italian white. Um, it was recommended to me by somebody who will remain nameless until I taste it, because if it's awful, <laughs> I don't want to have him be responsible. <laughs> but it is under $10, but it's supposed to, now most Italian whites aren't generally complex anyways. They're generally very easy to drink. They're very simple wines. Very yeah. simple wines. Which, with the coming holidays, that's probably what you want. You don't want people to be sitting there analyzing what they're drinking. So we're going to give this a shot and see if this is a simple enough wine to serve for Easter. And still be tasty enough. What do you guys think? I taste some pear and a very bitter end, almost like a like I'm eating the rind of a pineapple. The rind of a pineapple? Yes. Well, you were hungry growing up, huh? <laughs> I was eating pineapple rinds. I don't know. I, I, it's not what I expected it to taste like. I expected more of a dry table white. Yeah, there's, there's no bite to this at all. Uh, this is definitely not a dry table white. I, no. No, I, I would classify this as more on the sweet side. It's not dry, and it's definitely sweet. Not overly sweet. No, it's, I'm not, very, it's not a sticky syrup. I don't like sweet wines personally. Um, hmm. I'm going to wait to make my judgment on this one for a few more moments. Maybe a few more sips will uh, change my thoughts. But As you taste this, are you, are you starting to think of foods that you would uh, create at your restaurant to no, pair with this? No, I'm wondering if it would make a good sangria or not, Ooh, which yeah. really is its only shot in my book. So you want to hide the, the flavor. Yeah, not necessarily hide it, but if it is a good value mm -hmm. and you're having a nice Easter situation and or would it make a good punch or, I don't know, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't enjoy this if I was gonna sit down and, and have a bottle of it. So this might be the kind of bottle you pull out well into an evening of imbibing where 
people's taste buds maybe have been a little is shot. shot already. <laughs> or you don't like them. Or you don't, well, I wouldn't go that far. No. I mean, this is all about judging. I mean, I'm gonna, on a scale of one to 10, I'm leaving to give this about a five. I agree with you, about right um, in the middle. It's not bad, but it's not good. For the price point, and once again, everything you see here is available locally in some of the larger wine stores and the ones that we mentioned earlier. I'll also have them on our, our webpage. Um, but for the price point, I think this certainly is better than some of the more generic whites that you would serve or buy just to save money. I mm -hmm. think this is a little bit more complex than a $2 or $3 bottle of American white. Right, it's, it's, or the boxed wines. You know, it's, it's not undrinkable. Um, and again, I'm agreeing with you. I don't think this would be my first choice or my second choice at a party, but uh, if, if this were all that was left, I wouldn't be afraid to drink it. And Italian wines have always been interesting to me, Jordan, because uh, they've been making wine for almost as, if not longer, than the French have. And there's still sort of a mixed reputation for Italian wines. And why do you think that is? Oh, I just think that the French market themselves better. I, you know, it's, it's the same thing with the food situation. You know, classic French food um, is supposed to be the really high end, the tablecloth, the Scoffier and Paul Bocou. Uh, in, in Italy. That was a nice word. <laughs> that was good. Um, in Italy, uh, I personally like Italian food better than French food. I think it's a little more peasanty, it's a little more rustic. Um, and they're taking flavors and they're taking cooking techniques and they're actually really, really putting um, their emotion and feeling into their food. Now, you can go uh, from the north. Um, down to the south, and it's just different everywhere. And like they say in France, ha ha. And, and like in Italy, they, um, it's, it's more of a, a way of life for them, the food and the wine. Um, I think the best wines in Italy are the table wines. They don't have a label on them. Um, they don't leave the country. I think in, in France, the best wines, they put the label on and they try to get big bucks around the world for them. Now, it's a sweeping generalization, and I probably don't know enough about it to say that, uh, but that's my experience. Well, it's interesting because I was just thinking about what Jordan was saying about uh, Italian cuisine and French cuisine, and I think what you said makes the French look at food as an art, and the Italians look at food as a way of life, uh, more feeling in it. So it's interesting. It's very interesting because I like a lot of Italian whites or a lot of Italian reds, but a lot of people sort of say, Bob, why are you, why are you drinking all the Italian wines for? And I want to say because I like them. And there are a lot of good Italian wines out there. So don't be afraid of trying Italian wines, whether it's red or white, even though this one is a mixed review tonight. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. Thumbs down? Yeah. Can we go with thumb in the middle, like this way? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll do the middle. Do thumb this in the way? middle actually is pretty good. <laughs> we right, actually never thought of the thumb in the middle. Thumb one. That's in the not middle, bad. man. Sometimes being in the middle is a good time. So in our waning <laughs> moments, is there anything quickly you'd like to add that might be coming up this spring or summer at the restaurant? That no, that's not in? why I'm here. I'm here to support you guys, and I'm glad uh, your show is kicking off great. Of course, I would love for all of you to come down and see our new venue in Glastonbury at 2935 Main Street. Um, but that's not really why I'm here. I'm here to support you guys. I'm really happy that you know a lot of people are viewing. Apparently, there's viewers in Japan and, as Bob mentioned before, out in California. Um, and we're, I'm really, really pleased um, to, to be able to be a part of this with you guys. So thank you so much again for inviting me. Well, I appreciate you being here, and it's, uh, it's been a real great pleasure for me because I've enjoyed your food for so many years. And uh, I'm glad we're able to finally get together out of the restaurant, <laughs> finally, <laughs> after all these years, and drink cordially. So once again, I'm Bobby P. And I'm James Kimbrough. And until next time, keep, keep us, us in your, your wine, wine cellar. cellar.